It may seem like Apple is behind the competition a lot of the time. The company appeared to be slow to developments like widgets, bezel-less displays with camera notches and screens with high refresh rates. And with the iPhone 16 Pro, it appears to once again be late to the party, bringing generative AI features and a real button for the camera to its 2024 flagship. But if you will allow me to play a therapist for a moment, I think it's not that Apple is slow, I think Apple is cautious, perhaps overly so. Caution on its own isn't a bad trait, in fact, it could be considered thoughtful rather than rushed to the cutting edge with its peers Apple delivers usually finding a slightly different approach that is often an improvement on what's out there, just look at the Vision Pro headset or Apple Silicon, or even the iPod, the iPad, and the AirPods, which were far from the first of their kind when they launched. With the iPhone 16 Pro, the focus is on cameras and Apple intelligence. The problem is Apple intelligence isn't quite here yet. We can test some features in the developer beta that's currently available, but that's not necessarily the same as the experience the public will get when the update rolls out in October. It's not unprecedented for new iPhones to launch without some marquee features, sure, and thankfully there is still plenty that the iPhone 16 Pro brings. From camera control, the Fusion camera, and other video related updates to slightly bigger displays and iOS 18, the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max are integrating successors, even absent the vaunted intelligence features that are still to come. Arguably, the biggest change to the iPhone 16 lineup, not to mention the iPhone 16 Pro, is the introduction of camera control. This is a button on the right side of the device which has touch and pressure sensors on it to enable greater control with swipes and semi presses. One of the things this was supposed to do was let you push slightly on the button to trigger focus, similar to what half pressing a DSLR shutter button would do. That function won't be available at launch, so I can't say if it's effective. But by the large, camera control is a very Apple approach to a feature that has been around for years. From phones by Sony and Nokia with dedicated shutter buttons to Android handsets, with hardware-based double-click shortcut, the notion of quick access to your camera without having to farts with the screen is a popular one. For good reason too. I've hated having to swipe or long press the icon on my iPhone's lock screen in the past and even though I could set the iPhone 15 Pro section button to open the camera it just wasn't positioned well and I'd have to give up my mute button. So, Apple isn't breaking new ground with its hardware shortcut for a frequently used app, but it does do a few things differently with the touch sensor. You can swipe on it to tweak things like exposure, zoom levels and tone, and the half press still works as a way to select options or go back out of menus within the camera control interface. In theory, it's a nice way to make changes in the fly. In reality, there are a few issues and they largely have to do with placement. The button sits a little farther from the base of the phone than I'd like, so my fingers have to reach a bit more to press it whether I was in landscape or portrait mode. This wasn't usually a problem when I had both hands free and could steady the iPhone with my other hand and readjust my grip. But if you are trying to take a quick shot with just one hand, the button's location can feel unintuitive. Of course, everyone has different finger lengths and ratios, so it's entirely possible that other people find this logical. It also depends on your grip. If you are cradling the bottom of the device in your palm, it's harder to maneuver. If you are covering part of the screen and reaching out for the button head-on, it's slightly easier to use camera control. Still, even for those with the strongest claws, swiping and half pressing and double half pressing on the sensor is tricky. I was only ever really able to do that if I had my thumb holding up on the bottom edge and my middle ring and little fingers steadying the right end of the phone. Maybe. This is a new camera grip, I just need to relearn for this button. 
The awkward placement is a minor gripe compared to what I found most annoying the button's touch sensor. Not only was it difficult to swipe through different settings on holding the device with one hand, it also reacts to accidental touches and swipes. Sometimes the phone would slide down my palm and change the exposure or zoom level, completely ruining the vibe. I should point out that you can go into accessibility settings to either tweak or swipe sensitivity or turn it off altogether if it really bothers you. Honestly, if you are planning on making adjustments with camera control, it's best to have time, patience and both hands free. In those situations, I had a lot of fun editing settings and watching them by reflected in the viewfinder in real time. I also liked zooming in and out of subjects, decomposing a shot and tweaking exposure till I liked what I saw before then pushing down to snap the picture. I especially loved this while recording video since it makes slowly zooming in or out of a subject smoother than using the on-screen slider. Even if you are not a gluten for buttons, there are still some camera updates that might intrigue you. This year's flagships sport what Apple calls a 48MP fusion camera which has a faster quad-pixel sensor. This enables what the company describes as zero shutter lag, which is wording it has used repeatedly over the years. In this case, it's referring to how quickly the camera will capture a shot after you press the shutter button. I will admit I was initially confused by this update in part because it requires relearning some behaviors I had adopted to mitigate the shortfalls of older cameras. Basically, the iPhone 16 Pro's cameras are now so fast that when I asked someone to throw something so I could capture it in motion to see how still the images were, my shots ended up being of the person holding the object. Our video producer and I were very confused and it wasn't until the zero shutter lag concept was explained clearer to me that I got it. I had become used to pressing the shutter early since cameras, in my experience, would be fractions of a second slow. Apple has become so fast that it actually captured the literal moment I tapped the button instead of the split second after when the object was in mid-air. Depending on your mood, the new photographic styles can be fun or serious. Apple's tweaked the built-in camera filters to not only offer more options but give you greater control. Due to how the company has refined its processing each year, there is also an improved depth map captured when it detects a face in the scene. This combined with a greater focus on color science around skin tone has led to what might be my favorite new iPhone 16 feature. Whether I shot them in portrait mode or not, photos of people, what I took using the iPhone 16 Pro were a dream to edit. Simply switching between the standard, natural, luminous, quiet or ethereal styles already resulted in improvements to be colors and shadows, but I could also tap on each thumbnail to across the new editing touchpad and drag a dot around. This let me more precisely tweak the hues and contrast levels and an additional slider below let me adjust how warm the image was.
Apple's caution is sometimes warranted, especially at a time when mistrust of AI-generated content runs rampant, the company taking its time to get Apple intelligence right is understandable. But its deliberation doesn't always lead to winners. While I appreciate the attempt to differentiate camera control with the touch sensor for more versatility, I am not yet convinced on its usefulness. The good news is, and I cannot stress this enough, you have the option to tune it to your liking. And that's the theme I'm seeing in recent Apple features that hint at more thoughtfulness than usual. If you don't like something or if something isn't right for your needs, you can adjust or disable it. In iOS 18, you have greater control over your home screen's app layout and can pin custom collections for easier reach. In the Photos app, the action button introduced last year could have been a spectacular fail had Apple not let you still keep it as a mute switch, but it managed to give people more functionality while maintaining the status quo for those who are just as resistant to change. Change is scary, change is hard, but without change there is no progress. Apple's cautious approach is a tricky balancing act that's evident on the iPhone 16 Pro. Some new features like audio mix and custom routes in maps delivers mixed results, otherwise like photography styles are hits. Then there are the basic ingredients like good battery life and durable, attractive designs that Apple cannot neglect. The iPhone 16 Pro's subpar battery life holds it back from beating the competition, which is stiffer than ever this year, especially from Google. Luckily for Apple, most people who have iPhones are going to stick with iPhones, it's just easier. For those already sucked into the ecosystem, the iPhone 16 Pro are worth the upgrade from a model that's at least 2 years old. If you already have an iPhone 15 Pro, for the sake of our planet and your wallet, you might prefer to hold off on upgrading, especially since this year's devices aren't that much different.